Hello and welcome to part 2 of module 3 on genomic selection in which we were discussing why you might want to use genomic selection and what its potential benefits are relative to phenotypic selection. Now at the end of the first half of this module we were discussing relative efficiency of genomic selection per cycle and pointed out that genomic selection per cycle is not going to give you as much gain as phenotypic selection per cycle. So you may be wondering, well, why would I want to do genomic selection if on a per cycle basis it's not as good as what I do now? Well, the advantage of genomic selection over phenotypic selection is relative efficiency over time, not per cycle. And here's how we calculate out what is the relative efficiency per time. It's your relative efficiency per cycle. Well, we discussed how you calculate that in the first half of this module times this ratio here. The numerator of this ratio is the amount of time it takes to go through a cycle of phenotypic selection. This could be the number of years, the number of seasons, whatever unit of the time you want. And the denominator is the amount of time it takes to go through a cycle of genomic selection. So here's just an example. Let's say it takes eight seasons to go through a uh, cycle of phenotypic selection for yield. One cycle of uh, genomic selection for yield can take two seasons, and that's shown down here. Season one and two, and by going through those steps, you completed a cycle. Seasons three and four allows you to complete cycle two, and you can see that you can go through a cycle of genomic selection, rapid cycling, in two seasons. Let's assume the relative efficiency of genomic selection per cycle is 0.5. In other words, it's only half as good as a cycle of phenotypic selection. Now, in our relative efficiency per season, calculate out to be two. Now, what, what we that means is we estimate you'll get two times more gain per season with genomic selection than you would with phenotypic selection. Twice the gain per season with GS versus phenotypic selection. So the advantage of it is not per cycle. The advantage of genomic selection is gain per season. And there's just a diagram of that. Here's how you go through a cycle of phenotypic selection, things you're all familiar with. Genomic selection, you can cut out all that phenotyping part, and your gain per season can be significantly increased. Here's just looking at some data from my Ohio State University wheat breeding program. And here we're looking at our relative efficiency of genomic selection on a per cycle basis. And you can see for the different traits, fusarium head blight resistance, a couple of quality traits, grain yield under high heritable conditions, low heritable conditions. And this is almost always true. Your relative efficiency tends to go down as heritability of your trait goes down. And here with a uh, high heritability, we're actually getting a relative efficiency per cycle of uh, the yield of 0.6, which is actually quite good for a trait like yield. So. Now let's look at relative efficiency per year. So here I have look showing the relative efficiency per year in the red bars. And now let's look at grain yield and the high heritability. For me, a cycle of uh, phenotypic selection for grain yield takes me uh, seven years. I work with winter wheat. It's a slow process. But I can go through a cycle of genomic selection in one year plug those values in those equations and now my relative efficiency of genomic selection per season for grain yield is now greater than four. So um, you can see that again the advantage of genomic selection is your gain per season not so much your gain per cycle. And actually with uh, if it's going to take me seven years to go through a cycle of phenotypic selection then my relative efficiency on a per cycle basis could be as low as 0.143 and I'd still have an advantage over phenotypic selection on a per time basis. So your relative efficiency per time depends on two factors really. What is your relative efficiency per cycle? And how many years does it take to go through phenotypic selection and genomic selection? In some traits and some crops you can go through a cycle of phenotypic selection quite quickly and therefore genomic selection may not offer an advantage. But for other crops, and it takes a long time to go through a cycle of phenotypic selection, then genomic selection can become a quite 
attractive option. Another advantage you might get from genomic selection is cost and time. In some cases, genomic selection actually costs you less than going through phenotypic selection. And here's just an example for yield and maize. If you want to phenotype a population of lines to attain highly heritable genotypes, uh, phenotypes, you may want to do 12 yield plots. It might cost you $8 per plot, and that's $96 per line. If you do 1,000 lines, that's $96,000, and it would take you about six seasons, maybe. Genomic selection. You can genotype a line in maize for about $16. So a thousand lines would cost you sixteen thousand dollars. For that same ninety-six thousand dollars that you spent on phenotyping, you could actually genotype six thousand lines. And you can go through that cycle of genomic selection in two seasons. And when you're genotyping those lines and doing your selection for yield, you can also model their genetic value for any other trait as well. Now, if you phenotype for all these other traits, then your cost is going to start to go up. If you uh, do one disease, it might cost you $15 per line to phenotype it for that disease, $15 for the second disease, $15 to do quality. You add the $96 per line to all those other costs. Now you're up to $142 per line to phenotype them for those four traits and you spend $142,000. Well, for $142,000, you could have genotyped almost 9,000 lines. So genomic selection offers you some choices. You can spend the same amount of money as you would for phenotyping, but evaluate more lines by genotyping them. Or you could spend less money and do, do, this, and do the same lines. You could also reduce your phenotyping. Okay, and save some money there. For example, up here, you're doing 12 plots for yield. What if you did, did 10 plots? If you dropped two plots, I would save you $16. For $16, you could genotype those lines. So you have to really consider, do I want to do 12 plots of phenotyping or 10 plots of phenotyping plus genotyping? I almost guarantee you, going that second option is going to be better. And this is the way you have to look at genomic selection. It can really change your program. It can change how you cross, your inbreeding, your testing, your resource allocation, and your budgets. So once you start thinking about the benefits of genomic selection and how it fits in your program, you can really start to look at your entire program and start to reshape things. Another place where uh, Genomic selection offers some benefits to your phenotyping program is field testing efficiency. Let's say you're testing uh, 100 lines, you do a three rep test, you have 300 plots, uh, variety A is in three of those plots, and when you want to evaluate a predictive value of line A, you're really only going to use data from those three plots. So that's, you've used 1% of your information to predict the value of line A. But now let's say you genotyped all 100 lines. Now you know the relationship of line A to all the other lines and all the other plots. Now when you predict the value of line A, you use data from all plots to predict the value of line A because you can connect the data from the line A plots to all the others based on the relationship of line A to the lines in all the other plots. So now you're using 100% of the data to predict line A. And seeing how you now know the relationship between all your lines, maybe instead of putting three plots of line A in your field, maybe you can just put one plot in. And now with your 300 plots, you could test 300 lines instead of 100. And the reason you could do this is line A is not replicated in the field, but the alleles of line A are replicated through its relatives. And therefore, based on this replication of alleles and knowing the relationship of line A to everything else, you can predict the, the uh, value of line A with a fair degree of accuracy and test a lot more lines in your program.
And as we know from Unit 1, testing more lines is a tremendous benefit to your breeding program. Again, let's look at some of the benefits of this. Here's uh, the graph, uh, the table I've shown several times. You can see my probability of a nuke variety right now without any marker-assisted selection or genomic selection is 1 out of 2,000. Let's say I do uh, genomic selection for yield. And now instead of only 3% of the lines entering my testing being acceptable for yield, it's now 6%. Okay, be nice if it's 10%, 50%. Genomic selection is not going to guarantee you that the lines you select are going to be great. It's just going to improve your probability of lines being good. And you do this, and you can see the numbers down there at the bottom. It does improve your efficiency. In summary, genomic selection can improve the efficiency in plant breeding in several ways. Main advantage of genomic selection is improved gain per unit of time. Cross-validation estimates of accuracy are useful, but they do tend to be upwardly biased. And we'll talk about that some when we look at Module 4. And genomic selection can reduce the duration of a breeding cycle, reduce your phenotyping costs, increase your population size that goes into testing that you're evaluating in one way or another, and improve the value of your phenotypic data. Here is a quiz, and as always, you don't have to take this, but if you do wish to, you can send your answers to me. I'll let you know how you did. Thanks for viewing this material, and if you have any questions or wish to discuss anything, please contact me.